I'm going to use an indirect method for setting this lizard into a slate table surface. So basically what I'm going to do is float this lizard into a pre-cut channel if you like in the slate design. Now the reason I'm going to use an indirect which is doing it back to front if you like um, is because I've got different levels of glass on it so um, using this method enables me to really put a mix of different materials without having to worry about sourcing um, materials of the same thickness which would probably be impossible to get this range so for example here I've got some really thick antique gold small tea and there's some Mexican small tea there and there's glass nuggets there and you know a whole different range of glass all these different thicknesses so um, what we're looking at is the back of the lizard at the moment stuck onto a paper template and then um, then what I'm going to do is when I say reverse set, I'm going to flip it over and float it into um, the cement um, channel and tamp it down, a bit like when you screw concrete, tamp it down level. It's a pig of technique, but um, as I say, it's got its, it's, got its pros. Um, so what I'm going to do next is fill in the interstices with all these little gaps here between the glass, fill those in with dark grout. The adhesive that this is going to sit into is white, so the white behind the clear glass is really going to make it glow and then that, that will be um, black filling in all the, all the spaces. Um, obviously I don't want this black grout to bleed into the, into the area where the white adhesive is seen. So once that black grout has started to dry I've got to clean it all up very very carefully and make sure all those glass surfaces are perfectly clean. Now one of the reasons I'm doing it this way, putting the black grout in first and it will need playing with and topping up once it's set in and everything's ready to clean up, um, is because um, for example this dark glass here, this is iridized glass and the surface is more fragile so whereas um, I find that um, stained glass can take a lot of punishment when I come to cleaning up the grout gaps when I want to you know clean the white adhesive out and put dark grout in I find I can get away with um, wire brushes and all sorts this iridized glass won't take it so I want so that's the main reason I want to get the black in there so I'm not filling about too much um, or too roughly when it comes to cleaning the surface down at the finish of it. Um, once this dark grout is in here and I've cleaned it all up, what I'm going to do then is um, cut out a template in mesh that I'm going to stick to the back of this. Again, this back is what's going to be sat the other way round is going to be sat in cement and what, what you'll see is, is the other side and that'll be the top surface. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to see what's going on when I float the whole thing in the, in, in the wet cement or wet adhesive channel. I, I want to see where the cement is touching and so on and so forth under, under this um, under this glass. Um, where I'm making it harder for myself is because I'm putting the grout in first is um, any excess is going to have to squeeze out these edges so it's a lot of manipulation to get it level and, and pushing it around and, and getting the excess to squeeze out which is cleaned away from the edges whereas if I just put this straight onto mesh didn't grout the gaps and those gaps were free the adhesive would also rise up through those and that would make life a bit easier but I'm not going to do it like that. <laughs> 